princesses! Today I'm going to be talking about the Etude House Demo Blooming Lips Talk in the Cream Formula. I previously talked about these lipsticks in the matte formula and I was not a fan of the way the lipsticks felt on my lips and I wasn't really a fan of the colours either so I was really hoping that the cream formula would be better for me because I absolutely adore the packaging. I don't think you guys can really see the details because the exposure is turned up but um, it has like a little scalloped edge and they're pink and they're very cute so I really wanted to see if I could get a good formula out of the range of these lipsticks not a fan of matte lipsticks. I have really, really dry lips, so the matte lipsticks in general do tend to accentuate that. There are some formulas that work better than others, and sad to say that the Etude House formula in the matte didn't work well for me. So the product description says, the lipstick makes the lip look attractive with a vivid color and sensuous texture. The packaging of these lipsticks is super cute. I really like the baby pink color and the scalloped design. Other than the cute packaging, the lipstick itself is pretty nondescript. There are no stamps on the bullet itself to make them look unique, and it's really really hard to tell what colour you're picking up because the outer packaging is identical. The only way you can tell what colour it is, is if you read the teeny tiny name on the bottom of the lipstick. But it's seriously tiny, I have to put this lipstick right up to my eyes to see the shade name, and that's when I'm wearing my glasses. There are 12 shades in this collection, and they have a great range of pinks, reds, oranges, and nudes. These lipsticks have a creamy formula like the name would suggest, and they leave a really pretty finish on the lips. This formula is really flattering for dry lips, which works really well for me. However, since the formula is quite creamy, they don't have a very strong lasting power and need reapplication after eating, because you will literally eat them away. In general, the shades are not intensely pigmented, and some require 3-4 to four layers, while some only need one. I don't mind this aspect, because it makes them more wearable for me to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm going to start off with the orange shades. There are two oranges in the range, one of vibrant shade and one that is more coral. There are actually a couple of other shades that I would consider to be coral too, but they are in the red range. I am not a huge fan of the bright orange, but I really really like the coral. OR207 Refreshing Orange is a vibrant orange shade. This shade is so vibrant, I think the colour is also really pretty, but I don't really wear oranges very much. However, I can still appreciate the colour, I think it looks nice on me, it's just not my personal favourite. OR209 Desirable Orange is a pretty coral shade. I really like this shade, it's still orange, but it is much more wearable. I quite enjoy the formula of these lipsticks too, like the name would suggest, they are very creamy and flattering for dry lips. There are four red shades in the collection, though only two of them are really red. I'm not sure why there is a coral and a pink in this selection. RD302 Angry Red is a classic blue toned red. This is a beautiful shade. Since these shades are quite creamy, the lasting power isn't as good as a drier, matte lipstick and they do wear off after eating and drinking. RD303 Fantastic Red is another pretty coral. This shade is similar to Desirable Orange, but it's slightly brighter. This is a shade that I really enjoy wearing, but I find that it is too similar to Desirable Orange for me to want to keep both. RD304 Thrilling Red is a pretty mid-toned pink. This shade is really pretty, but I don't think it should be in the red shade because to me it definitely looks pink. However, it is really pretty pink and I get a lot of wear out of this shade. RD305 Unstoppable Red is a light red shade. This is my daytime red shade. It's not quite as intense as Angry Red, but it still looks red rather than pink or coral. There are three pink shades in the collection, two shades that I love and one that I do not. PK002 Angry Pink is a cool toned purpley pink. I am not a fan of this shade. I can appreciate that it's a nice shade, but it's not my favourite shade on my skin tone. I also find that this particular colour applies really unevenly too, so it's not a favourite. 
EK004 Breathtaking Pink is a mid-toned pink. I really enjoy wearing this colour. It's a really pretty day-to-day -day colour to me and I think it looks really nice on my skin tone. PK005 Excited Pink is a pale peachy pink. This is another shade that I really enjoy. This shade is a My Lips But Better shade which I think flatters my dry lips too. However, this is quite a sheer shade. The other colours stain my lips and this shade isn't pigmented enough to cover the stains. There are three beige or nude shades in this collection. I quite like that they have included some of the darker nudes too. BE101 Nettle Beige is a light peachy nude. This nude looks really pretty on my skin tone. However, like Excited Pink, this shade is very sheer and requires quite a few layers to show up on my lips. This is the nudest of the nudes for my skin tone. BE106 Sentimental Rose Beige is a brown toned nude. This shade is so pretty and it's quite unique for me. I don't have any shades like this in my collection and I actually quite like wearing it, though I didn't really think that I would. BE107 Dried Rose Beige is a pretty rose shade. I'm not sure why this shade is in the nude collection, I think it would be better suited to the red collection. However, I do like this shade too. It's another unique shade that you don't see very much in the K-Beauty world or in my current collection. So I love that these are inexpensive at between six to eight US dollars each. They have super cute packaging. They have a really beautiful broad color range. They're easy to apply and reapply. And they are flattering on drier lips. I don't love that it's hard to tell which shade you're picking up with the packaging. And some shades are very sheer and need multiple layers, just like the one that I am wearing today. I think I did like four layers of this to get this color, which is not a very bright color. As usual, there are quite a few things that I like about these lipsticks, but there's also quite a few things that I don't like about these lipsticks. There are some shades that I love, I love the colour of them, I love their formulation and pigmentation, but then there are some shades that do not look good on my skin tone, and then there are also shades that need three or four layers to actually show up on my lips. For this sheerness, I think that it can be really frustrating because it's a lipstick, it is not a lip balm, that's the sort of pigmentation I would expect from a lip balm and I ex would expect to do two or three or three or four layers of a lip balm to get the colour to show up but that's not why you buy a lipstick. I also think that you're going to be using quite a lot of the lipstick to actually be applying them so if you're doing three to four coats of that sort of colour it's not going to last you a very long time so you may as well just get a tinted lip balm because they would be cheaper. It is frustrating to me that the pigmentation and the formula is not the same throughout the entire range of these, but what are you going to do? I think the thing that annoys me the most about these is the packaging. I love the packaging. I think it's super cute, but the only way to tell what color you're picking up out of the 12 shades is to find the color on the bottom of here, um, and it's pretty small. It's very hard to read these, or to physically look inside the tubes and roll the lipstick up to have a look. <laughs> there are also some colours that look really similar, so if you're going for RD5 and it looks like RD4, you may pick up the wrong one and get a different formula and it's just a gamble. I wish that they had done like different bottoms or different caps or even like just bigger writing on the bottoms or on the top for the shade names because they look the same. But for me, some of these shades are total winners and I'm gonna keep them. The other ones are gonna be passed along to friends and family and anyone else who wants these sort of colors of lipsticks because they are not my cup of tea. But it is really hard to like an entire range of lipsticks, so I'm not annoyed or upset that I don't like some of the colors on my skin tone. That is just life. So I would recommend the Etude House Dear My Blooming Lips Talk in the cream formula to any princesses who are looking for lipsticks that are in super cute packaging, are not intensely pigmented and are really flattering for drier lips. Thank you guys so much for watching this review and I'll see you next time. Bye!